Today, we are going to take a look at how a management team can affect the performance of a stock company. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter B and I welcome you here at My First Million, where we are achieving our financial goals together. So to start this off, as a private investor in individual stock companies, in my experience, I believe that the management team is probably the one most overvalued factor as a reason why to invest into a company. Why I'm saying so? It's not because a company does not, cannot have a big influence on the company's performance. Of course, but how a company is doing is also highly correlated on the strategy and also especially on the effectiveness of implementing this strategy that the management team is setting for the company. However, the difficulty there and why I believe this is a usually too highly uh, overrated factor for investing into individual companies is because as an outsider, it is very difficult to evaluate a good management team. I have seen it over and over again in many different examples where I personally invested in a company or where I just follow the company and hear people talking about the company, where I personally was thinking that the, comp uh, the company has a great management team or where other people in general were thinking that the company has uh, great management teams. Um, and usually it stays so, everything looks good and the management team looks very professional until so, some significant things, um, some significant things happen or some changes occur. So for instance, I have seen a company which was in the food, food space in Europe, but it was a global company where the company was struggling and they brought in, they brought, uh, they brought in a very experienced operational um, management team. And it looked like they really bring, are bringing in the right people. And at first it even looked like they are turning the ship around slowly but steadily. They are doing the right improvements there. And everything looked good for the company. And also the, the manager's previous experiences were showing very great success. However, still, as the company was still struggling through, they needed more capital. And at one point, they needed to do a capital raise, but the management team was anticipating this way too late. And therefore, um, when they did the capital raise, they did it so late that it significantly diluted the, the, the current shareholders. Um, another situation, I, I saw a company where again, um, the uh, very experienced management team with a lot of industrial knowledge, and also performance shown in, in the industry before, build up a new company. And the company was um, doing very well in terms of growth and implementation of, of new products. But then finally it failed because still there were some issues happening with, with credits there. And the company wasn't evaluating the risks with those credits well enough. In another situation, Again, it seems like the company, uh, the company's management team had a lot of experience in the industry and they again had a lot of um, performance in their track record. But they were constantly under, in this new company that they, um, that they were leading, they were constantly underperforming and never meet their own targets. Then I have seen several times where a good leadership team was in place. But at some point they made, they got too ambitious and they made the decision to take over another company and paid way too much money for the company. Or in even worse situation, I saw a case where the company's management team was highly praised as being very in innovative and um, bringing um, re revolution, even revolutionizing an industry. But in the end, um, what people didn't were aware of is that actually the management team was involved in fraud and the whole company fell apart afterwards. 
And another example was a, situa a situation where the companies was where many companies in the industry were founder led. And over time, one founder after the other founder stepped down and got replaced by a professional CEO. But there was only one company left remaining, which was still founder led. And he, at first, this company got a lot of um, praise for it, as people generally believe that this founder led company, the founder, um, is really dedicated to the company's long term goals and perspective. But over time, people were more and more uh, doubting about the, about the strategy that the founder was following. So, considering these kind of situations, I experienced many times that people or investors in general are way too overrating the, the uh, management factor. It has a factor of the performance of the company but it's very difficult to evaluate as an outsider. However, there's one area, even as an outsider, where which you, can, uh, which you need to take a look at to really see whether or not the company's, the company's management team is doing a great job. So let me switch to my whiteboard for this. So at least for my experience again, the only factor that you really can take strongly into consideration when evaluating a management team is how they are using their capital, the money that they have in hand. So or in other terms, how they do capital allocation within the company. And there are basically five things that the company can do with its money. I, I copied this these five points from everything money, but I switched around the order a little bit. So one of the five things that the company um, can be doing with its money, with the, with the capital it has, it can in reinvest in themselves. So what's the meaning of reinvest? Usually when you invest into a company it's because you believe they have great products or great services, or they have a bright future, or they will be able to generate a lot of cash flow in one area. But to make this all happen, they need to do the necessary spendings. They need to uh, maybe put emphasis on R&D or they need to put money into marketing in order to grow, them, uh, grow their market share. Or at least they need to make sure that um, they continuously reinvest into the necessary things to keep the positive cash flows going. So this is, I would say, the number one reason what the company should be focusing on, um, how to use the, the capital, is to reinvest in themselves in order to really achieve the business potential that the company has. So, but of course, as the second part, over time, you also hope um, that the company will have excess of capital um, not just invest cap, uh, money, but also get money back. So this is usually what you we would call free cash flow. So what will the uh, company then can can do with the free cash flow if it doesn't if it isn't used for uh, reinvesting in it itself? It could make acquisitions. It could buy other companies, or it could buy um, technologies that it uh, that could be very useful for their own product portfolios and so on. So that's another way um, the company um, could use its capital to invest for the company's future. Then often companies have debt in order to grow or to expand in one areas. So if they get money back, if they earn their money back, if they have incoming cash flow, they could use this to pay down debt. And usually if you pay down debt, um, the balance sheet get more and more stable and stronger and stronger and therefore the risks in the company are, are less as, uh, smaller and smaller. So the less debt the company has, the more stable the company will be in the future. And then the last two, point four and f five, is um, returning the money back to the, to the investors. So there are two ways how the company can be returning money to the investors. One way is to pay dividends 
And another way is to buy back shares. Buying back shares means the number of shares are outstanding, are getting smaller and smaller. So if you continue to be um, a shareholder of the company and don't sell your your shares, um, your your percentage that you are holding on the your ownership percentage will be increasing as the company is, is buying back shares. So these are the five things that a company can be doing in how to allocate the capital. And as an outsider, again, as an external investor into the company, you can absorb these five things very closely to see um, and to use it as an as a evaluation point, whether or not the management company is doing a great job. For instance, if your main goal is that or your main hope in by investing into the companies that the um, that the company is growing its business. You want to see that more of the capital that the company has is flowing into new products or into market expansions and so on. Then the second point, when the company is doing an acquisition, it's always a good timing to to evaluate how the company is really ha handling the money, and you will see that that. Some companies really do very good acquisitions that you feel like that's a very reasonable add-on at a very reasonable price. But sometimes you will see um, that companies will going, go purchasing um, other companies at way too high valuations. And this you certainly as an investor don't want to see happening. Then paying down debt. If you see that the debt level is pretty high or if you, you feel like the economic is changing, then you want to see that the company's management team is focusing on also on reducing the debt in order to make the company more stable for the long term, for every upcoming cycle. And you want to make sure that, um, you want to be sure as an investor that um, the debt level that the company um, has amassed is not too risky in the long term. Paying dividends, it makes sense as soon as um, the money cannot be used within the company more effectively. And it's usually a very nice way how, um, how company will let people to participate on the profits that it's making. But you also then again want to see, can the company really cover the dividends through its cash flow? And do you really want to see the dividends now? Or you would feel like it, the company should be able to generate a better rate of return by reinvesting in itself. And then buyback shares. Of course, you don't want to see that the company buybacks shares when you feel the price of the of the of a stock is already high. You want to see that the company is able to do a lot of buyback uh, buyback a lot of shares when the evaluation is low, in order to get also a good money for for their shares that that is repurchasing. And in contrast, for buying back shares, it's even issuing new shares. You don't want to see that the management is constantly issuing new shares. For instance, especially like in startups of tech companies, you will see a lot of um, issuing of new shares as a compensation package for their workforce. But on one side, this is good to retain um, the talents in your company and attract talents to your company. But for as an investor, if you see if this is happening too extensively, you will be constantly diluted. So the shares outstanding is another factor that you can evaluate whether or not the company is really doing a great job at allocating its capital. So to sum this up, again, as I would say it's very difficult to evaluate a company's management team from the outside. But taking a look at the capital allocation um, will give us quite some good idea whether or not the company is doing the right decisions, the right decisions for its investors and also for the long term. So do you have any experiences also with the management teams in the past of investments that you have done, good or bad? Please share them with us in the comments below. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I look forward to see you in the next video and especially I look forward to see you winning financially.